There are over 5 billion podcasts in the world and over 500 million people listen to them. But getting your podcast in front of those people, that's a challenge, isn't it? How should you promote your podcast or your client's podcast? And how are you supposed to position and frame your podcast so that it drives actual business results? Well, that's what we're covering in today's episode of The MarTech Show. The past is gone. Now is the future. This is The MarTech Show. Exploring today's marketing technology solutions. Social media, artificial intelligence, augmented reality. Now is the future. Content, SEO, email, analytics, listening, advertising, and more. I'm your host, Mike Alton, and I'm joined by agency owner and technology futurist, Robin Diamond. Each episode explores the latest developments in marketing technology and shares new solutions and innovative approaches that you need to know about to grow your business today. And now, the rest of today's episode. Welcome back to the MarTech Show, where Rob and I get to dish on what's shiny and new in the MarTech space, then do a deep dive into a specific platform or solution that can help you in your business today. Robin, how are you doing? Fantastic. Thank you. So excited to have you. And we've got a bit of a puzzling development from LinkedIn to talk about today. The network, known for being serious and professional, is now apparently going after the complete opposite crowd and adding games and puzzles. And while this might feel like Facebook circa 2014 and maybe even an early April Fool's joke, LinkedIn did confirm the upcoming capability to TechCrunch, saying we're playing with adding puzzle-based games within the LinkedIn experience to unlock a bit of fun, deepen relationships, and hopefully spark the opportunity for conversations. Huh. What do you think, Robin? Is this a genius move? Or does it feel more like LinkedIn has jumped the shark? I feel like they jumped. What happened, Mike? <laughs> like, this is the only platform that, I mean, it's fun. I love connecting. We we have a great partnership on there, but what are they doing? I mean, I don't know how you feel. We haven't talked about this behind the scenes, but like, we it, it's become very salesy lately. And now it's like, they're going like, you're right. They're going back like circa 2014 of like, hey, we're Facebook. And we're like, no, no, we're not. It's a way to connect, but in a deeper level. I hate the sales part too. I don't know what's going on. Mike, maybe you can weigh in. No, I just feel like this is development time that could have been spent in so many better ways. I actually, I used, I liked Facebook's stories or uh, LinkedIn stories format. I wish they wouldn't have got rid of that. And I would have seen them bringing that back or doing something more on the community space and reinvesting in that part of the platform, this this feels strange to me. I guess maybe the question they should have asked is ask us. Like ask yeah, us what maybe. we would love to see. Like we talk about this all the time. We talk about relationships. Just put it out there. Tell us what you need. LinkedIn, ask us what you need. We would tell you it is not games. A hundred percent. We do not have time to play games on LinkedIn. No. So those of you watching, let us know what you think. I, we have a comment from Sarah Scott who says, seems off brand. I feel like anytime LinkedIn tries to be like everyone else, yes. they miss the mark. That is something strange about that too, right? It's, it's always got to be a little different there and not always in a good way. Thanks for sharing that, Sarah. So everyone, feel free to chime in in the comments. Let us know what you think about LinkedIn and their puzzles. But let's talk podcasting. Brands continue to lean into podcasting as a marketing channel. Here to Grow Pulse, we are this, the MarTech Show is a live webinar, then use that to power a podcast. And we're in the process of launching three iterations of the Social Pulse podcast. Other brands like Adobe and HubSpot and Reveal have formed entire podcast networks. They're thinking like media companies, as Joe Polizzi would say, and they're finding new avenues of distribution and new measurements of success. How? Well, that's exactly what Deirdre Chen is going to talk to us about. She's a serial entrepreneur who lives and breathes content marketing, particularly podcasting, having authored Honey Trap Marketing and hosted the Grow My Podcast show. Deirdre is a 2023 honoree of the 100 Women to Know in America and has co-founded Cap Show, an AI-powered content marketing solution that helps businesses and creators leverage their content to amplify their message, grow their listeners, and build their movements. Hey, Deirdre, welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you so much for having me on here. So happy to have you. Now, right off the bat, let's get into what Cap Show does for marketers, whether they're creating podcasts or video content. What's it about? 
Yes. So um, uh, we're in a, I think I mentioned to you, Mike and Robin, that we're in this really uh, weird time where we're actually about to launch the whole a whole new Capture, Capture Next Gen. So I'm going to talk about what Capture, current Capture does, and then where it is that we see uh, next gen coming, which is going to be literally imminently in, in a few weeks time. So currently, uh, Capture basically ingests, you know, audio or video, um, as long as there's spoken word in it, Capture takes that and it creates a whole host of content marketing assets. So everything from your title and description to social media captions for all of the different social media platforms, um, emails, LinkedIn articles, blog posts, it uh, identifies sound bites, it pulls out quotes, um, it writes short form video scripts, like it does a ton of things. Uh, and what we realized <laughs> unknowingly was um, that we were really overwhelming people. Um, it kind of, you know, if I were to tell you my story, I think a lot of people would vibe with it because it's it's a common one. You know, I started a coaching business, you know, four years ago. That was when I had my first podcast. And it was through that journey that I was like, I need to, I'm creating content, but no one's discovering it. No one's really listening to it. It's not really doing the thing that it was meant to do. And so whenever I talk to anyone else who is trying to have their audience do something, um, take action, it there's, re there's a difference between creating content for content's sake and creating content to actually get a result. And that's kind of where we're transitioning Capture to really address. Um, and that's what's coming with Capture Next Gen. So, you know, I think when we spoke about like, why is it that podcast shouldn't just repurpose their, their, their content? It's because of this, it's this nuance or this difference that comes from, are we creating content for content's sake? And what, why are we creating content? And how do we actually create content that's actually going to drive outcomes and results? So happy to dive into that, but um, that's kind of what Capture does. <laughs> I think that's amazing. And I, and I love from being an agency that's doing a podcast itself to Mike and I working on this podcast. There's so many questions that I, that come to mind right now. And I, I think the first one is really like what, whether creating podcast or video content, like what are you supposed to do? How do you start mm, uh, with the actual creation? Yeah. Holy, yeah, I was going to, holy smokes, this is a big one. <laughs> okay, sorry. This, <laughs> no, 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 that's a question. <laughs> Um, let's, I guess, uh, if we talk to, you know, like eight people who entrepreneurs, right. People who have businesses, I think the great thing about any of us is that we have this message that is like burning inside of us that we just need to share. And it breaks my heart every time I speak to someone who, for whatever reason, they get held back from actually starting that podcast or that YouTube channel or whatever it is that they want, because of all of the, um, I don't know if you guys went through this, but, uh, you know, when I first started, I found every reason to procrastinate. I was like, I don't have the right microphone and I don't have the right lighting and I don't have, you know, the background and all the things, right? And we do this to ourselves because uh, I think we just, we're procrastinating. We're just letting all the, these little excuses actually hold us back from just, as you said, just getting started and creating content. And when I realized that that was happening to me, I was like, no, I'm not going to let that happen. It, I had, I think Mike saw, you know, my original background. So I know when I hopped on Robin, you were like, this background is amazing. And it is, it only, we actually only did this over like in December of last year. So what's that like three months ago? Um, but for the longest time, I just had a plain white background. Um, and it was like, it was frankly, super boring <laughs> and ugly. <laughs> um, <laughs> and the thing is that, you know, like we can't let that stuff stop us. We have to lean into, well, we're, we're all, every one of us here for a reason. Um, we started a business for a reason, whether that's because we're passionate about something and or because we're passionate about helping our audience and our clients with something. And that content has to get out there. And for me, I kind of, I've kind of seen like, three broad areas where we can really um, let our content shine, no matter what it is, no matter what type of creator we are. So there's, you know, the expert superpower, uh, which is essentially like, hey, I know what it is I'm talking about. I have my own frameworks and strategies. I'm an expert and I'm going to share that, right? So that's one type of superpower that um, 
you know, a ton of, especially coaches and consultants and service providers, you know, they have this superpower, right? They are an expert. They know their stuff and they can just literally turn on a microphone, turn on a camera, even if it's on your phone and just talk about what it is that they are so good at, right? Like what is that expertise? So that's one superpower. The second superpower is, um, I, this is more where I lean. It's being a curator and it's like, I have this overall strategy, um, but I cannot profess to be an expert in every single piece of it because every single piece of it is, you know, like in a, in and of itself an expert area. And so I actually love finding people who have that expertise and I can nerd out with them um, on a podcast or on a live stream and really, you know, get to know what it is that they love sharing with their audience and with their clients. Um, and then the third superpower, I call that the investigator. Um, and this is where, you know, no matter what the topic is, it's really about the person. It's really about the the um, the guest that the investigator gets on. And what they are so good at, which I wish I was better at this, is, you know, A, doing the research up front to be like, okay, this is really, um, you know, what this person loves talking about. But, hey, what is a different perspective or a different way that I can actually get them to share about things so that it's not the norm. It's we're actually mm -hmm. invested. We're going deeper into something that they haven't maybe ever shared before. Um, and so I, those are three broad content superpowers that I always um, go, if you can figure out which one you fit into, then actually pressing record is so much easier because you can just lean straight into that. You can just be like, yep, I'm an expert. I'm just going to like talk about the thing that, oh, I'm a curator. I just need to find really great guests that fit into my framework that my audience is going to want to hear from, or I'm an investigator and, you know, X, Y, Z. So um, I don't know if that quite answers your question, Robin, but that's always where I start. Like where, what is your content superpower? And not only answered my question, it gave me like, so I was like, wait, what is my superpower? I need to know this. <laughs> I like, I wrote it down. I was like, what is my superpower? I love that. Yeah. I, I couldn't relate more to a lot of the things that you were saying. You, you talked about procrastinating getting started. I know for me, I'm a bit of a perfectionist and mm -hmm. I hate the idea of starting something and not doing it well, like really, really well, right from the start, even though that's, that's, that's a foolish approach. And you talked about being an investigator. That's what we're going to do right now. Cause we want to drill down. And I want to go back <laughs> to something you mentioned before that you just kind of flew right by. And it was the whole topic of the show that we shouldn't repurpose our podcast content. Tell, tell mm. us again, why exactly shouldn't I repurpose all this content? Because that's what my CEO wants me to do. And, and I'm going to get in trouble if I don't. And what should we yes. be doing instead? Yes. Okay. So this kind of goes back to, um, you know, the whole idea of creating content for content's sake. So, Paul, oh, okay. So when I, when we um, first launched Capture, so we launched over 18 months ago now. Um, it was before, you know, ChatGPT. It was before the hype of AI. And at the time when we launched, it was... Uh, you know, we did the thing and you, I think you guys talked about this with the LinkedIn um, where we spoke to people and one of the first conferences that we went to was actually PodFest. Uh, we were actually invited to go and we just spoke to a ton of podcasters about what it was that they were struggling with. We had an idea because, you know, as you know, I'm a content marketing nerd. And so for me, I, I knew that I wanted to bring, you know, content marketing to life. Um, but the more that we spoke to podcasters, the more they were like, oh my gosh, if you can just solve you know, the whole show notes thing, like title and description, that would be a lifesaver because that was the number one burning um, problem they had. And so that's what we did. So for the first iteration of Capture, it was relaunched, first of all, with like, here, you're, we'll just like, we'll just give you your show notes. And then we started to build it out in terms of, um, we'll help you, you know, we know that you want to promote your podcast episode. So we'll help you with that, you know, that copy and, you know, with the email and things like that. And then, um, and then, you know, ChatGPT and AI became like this massive thing. And when I looked at the this, this space, I was like, oh my gosh, I, you know, what I see happening is like, I call it the content vomit, you know, on the internet where now creating content just becomes so easy because we have access to AI and these tools that literally anyone can kind of almost like be that expert or be, you know, whatever it is that they want on social media. Um, and I was like, we had to really look at what it was that we were doing and how do we not, you know, play into that content vomit space? You know, we are powered by, by AI. And so it seemed a little bit counterintuitive to, 
you know, how I was thinking to what it was that we were building. And so, and what that meant and looked like was, because I don't know if you've ever, I, I've repurposed my podcast before and repurposing to me was like, okay, how do I, before it was like audiograms, it was all about the audiograms, right? Like how do I create really simple audiograms, put that out there. Um, and then I was creating posts of like episode just dropped, you know, those kind of, those kind of posts. And which by the way, got no engagement, like no one wanted to see those. And then I was like, okay, well, what if I just like clipped really short videos, you know, um, and shared that. And the problem with that is that no one, uh, who, if people are following you, they don't really either know or care about what my guests was saying because they, they're like, who is this random person on my feed now? Um, so it was starting to turn my audience off. And so when I, I and this is, I think I mentioned to you, um, Katie. So I started talking to Katie Brinkley. So she, um, from Next Step Social Communications, um, she's a social media expert and she was taking me through her strategy, um, her four post strategy. And I was, cause I was telling her, I was like, I'm having this issue of like, I do not want to just create content for content's sake. I do not think that the way that we are quite repurposing our podcast is doing what it needs to do. And she was like, hey, well, what do you need social media to do? And I was like, well, I guess, you know, to begin with, I want more listeners on the podcast. But even more than that, how do I grow my email list? Because, you know, I'm greedy. So like, I want all these things. <laughs> I want more people on my email list and I want more clients and and definitely more users into capture and things like that. And um, she was like, okay, well, let's let's like, I had to kind of like throw out all of my previous ideas about social media and, and what it was there for. Um, and then, and she started talking me through what it, well, how I should, we should be looking at social media. Um, and I don't know about you, but you know, before I used to, I used to hear all the time, like social media, you have to be social on social media, right? I, like, has anyone else heard this? Like yes. be social on social media. And I was like, I don't know what in the world that means. Like, what, <laughs> what does that actually mean? <laughs> um, and it was only when Katie started breaking down her four post strategy that I was like, oh, okay, this, now I get it. This is making sense. And what it really comes down, came, came down to was like, how do we create content that actually calls forward the right people? And what we mean by that is, so this, this particular topic that we're talking about, right? Like, it's still in your realm, your respective realms of marketing, content marketing, social media marketing, but not everyone maybe cares about repurposing a podcast or not repurposing a podcast. Maybe they don't even have a podcast, right? So how do you think, so not all of your followers or your whole audience is going to care about what it is that we're talking about today. So what we need to do is we need to call forward the right people, the people who actually will care about this. Um, and that starts with the, um, what Katie calls the awareness post, right? Like how do you get people raising their hands to be like, oh my gosh, yes, I have this problem too. Um, and the great thing about that, and you know, you guys would both know this because you are, you know, deep in the social media space is that engagement is actually what gets visibility. Um, and it actually gets it, it's actually engagement is actually what gets your content in front of the same people that is the people who engage, but also more of the right people like them, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. then it was like, so, okay, we get people to, to raise their hands. And then it's like, but then we want to go, we want to give them, give to them, right? We want to give them more value. So then the second post is like the elaboration post, which goes into, Hey, here's a tip. You know, we, we, we raise our hands. We all have this problem that we're struggling with. Here's something that either me or my guest has done and it's worked for them. Um, and then the third post is all about community. This is where the human element comes in. This is the one that AI just cannot do, right? This is like, cause mm -hmm. AI at this stage cannot read your mind. It does not know your memories. Um, and so this is where it's talking more about you and how um, either, either how you've struggled with the problem, how you solved it, or even like how, you know, you, you met the guest because um, I love your story, you know, Robin and Mike, how you guys met when Robin took you on a tour of Miami, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and, but, you know, you could very well share that as part of your community post to be like, this is how Robin and I met. And I'm so glad that we get to, you know, do this podcast together um, and have these really great content marketing conversations together. This is where you really want to draw your audience into, hey, this is who I am. And, you know, I have a puppy and I have kids and we love doing these things, you know, just 
uh, whatever, and I'll talk about how this all, how we actually do this. I just want to go through what the four posts are. Um, and then the last one is then the actual action post because through this journey, you've had people actually engaging with you, which is where now it makes sense when people are like, be social and social. I'm like, oh, I get it now. Like we, we're we actually trying to create content that has people wanting to have conversations with us rather than creating content that's just a repurpose of a podcast because all we want is to put something out there. Again, we're creating content for content's sake. Does that distinction make sense Yeah. in terms of what absolutely. I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I, I like how you are drawing a distinction between just doing it to create posts and creating posts that have real value. And I also like that, that you're unintentionally saying we're not creating engagement posts just for the sake of engagement either. I, I see people do this all the time where they'll say, well, mm. what do you think about Brussels sprouts? And yeah. that has nothing to do with their job, with yes. their life. They may not even eat yes. Brussels sprouts, but they're doing it because they know that's one of, you know, 10 questions that they were told. Yeah. Ask these kinds of questions every once in a while. Just yes. your engagement. Yeah. It's amazing. You said content, you know, you, you talked about a couple of different things. So many things. The first one was content vomiting. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yes. Why are we all doing this? We are. It is, it is vomit. It's like nauseating at, at, at its finest. And so I love that you said that. But then you talked about content dripping. And can you talk to us a little bit more about that? Like, how do you do that? How do you make something that makes people want to watch this? Yes. Okay, cool. So um, it really starts with, you know, instead of, so the way, when I think about, repurposing this is what comes to mind and you guys can jump in and be like no I think repurposing this this thing but repurposing to me because this is how I used to do it was like okay I have this 30 minute you know podcast recording um I'm going to just find 30 second clips of something hopefully it's hopefully it's an, it's you know inter entertaining or interesting in some way but I'm just going to find these clips I'm going to put them out there um uh, and that was me content vomiting you know all over the internet um and then when I really um, stepped back and thought about it, I was like, well, no, I mean, okay, the podcast can still serve a purpose and it serves a very, very important purpose, but it's not for that purpose. The purpose that it serves is A, it creates a topic of conversation, what we call a premise. Um, and then, and, and alongside that is, you know, when I spoke about those four posts and, you know, drooping out our content, um, it really, it, we really want to be intentional. And this is, again, like we're not creating content for content's sake. We're being really intentional about the outcome that we want. This is how we, you know, because again, I said I was greedy, you know, I want to get more clients. I want to get more listeners. I want to get, um, you know, more people on my email list. So whatever that end action is, and there can only be one when you do this, uh, as in one per week or one each time you, you know, you, you do this, um, this strategy. Uh, I always go, how do I align my my topic or my premise with that action my premise comes from the podcast right so even though I say don't repurpose your podcast I mean that but I, I mean I also am not saying don't use your podcast um, episode at all what I mean is hey you spoke about something you spoke about it for a reason right like maybe it was because let's take this um, topic as an ex another as an example again the reason could be you have a lot of podcasters in your audience and they're also wondering what to do with the content that they're creating. And so we want to make sure that we get in front of the right people. This is why this works really well as well, because we want to call the right people forward. And so our whole premise, our topic is going to be based on this, which is, hey, over the next, over the, over the week, we're going to be talking about why you should not be repurposing your podcast. Who here is repurposing a podcast, right? <laughs> But the end action that you guys, that you might want is, um, I don't know, maybe you have a lead magnet for podcasters, or maybe you just want them to listen to this podcast. That That is a, you know, you want more listeners on this podcast, right? Then what we'll do is we'll actually, um, according to that, those, that strategy, we'll actually go, all right, this is the premise. So that's step number one. What is our premise? Our topic is going to be what podcasters, how, like podcasters should not be repurposing this is what they should be doing instead. And then this is our action. And we just basically drip out the content that gets us to that action. And it's all about calling the people forward to create that engagement, give to them. So it's like, this is what you should be doing instead. Let them in to be like, hey, I used to do this too. And, you know, ever since I changed how it is that I approached content, and creating content and my podcast content, like these are the results maybe that I got, um, or, you know, we, 
Mike, we can talk, you can talk about how we met even, and Hey, like Deidre's going to actually share with, and then by the time the action posts come, which, which is like, by the way, did you know that we actually recorded a podcast on this exact topic with Deidre, who I actually introduced to you in the last post, people are going to be like, I've been following you on this journey already. Like it becomes a no brainer to want to then actually take that action. Um, and so that's kind of, you know, yeah. Anyway, I could talk about this forever, but like, I'm so I'm so passionate about like, you know, we let's actually get really intentional with the content that we create. Love it. Love it. Okay. I'm legit taking notes because everything that we've been doing with this show, with all the other podcasts that we have coming up with my own podcast, getting tons and tons of ideas. So thank you for that. And if you're just tuning in, we're talking with Deidre from Cap Show about podcasting. We've got several more topics to talk about that are going to help you position your podcast and your brand. But before we get to that, have you ever been to the Eiffel Tower? So I'm hanging out here in Paris behind me, the iconic Eiffel Tower, which got me on Google. I did a search, one of the top tower destinations in the world. Number three, Big Ben. Number two, the Leaning Tower of Pisa. And number one, the Eiffel Tower. So you would always think, I need to go to the Eiffel Tower. But the fact is, all three of those destinations are amazing experiences. So think of towers the way you would social media. What's the right social media fit for you? When I look at the price point and the top players in the space for what you get, the most enterprise features, there's three players. There's Hootsuite, there's Sprout Social, and there's Agora Pulse. So why is Agora Pulse the right tower for you? Well, it's funny you ask. So I went to G2 because it's all the user reviews. What do we get are five reasons that matter to you as a marketer. Number one, it says that we actually are the easiest one to use of those three. Number two, we have the best support, and you know that support is what really drives the machine when you're really frustrated. Number three, pricing for teams. All right, you got a team? You want pricing that's affordable, that doesn't keep nickel and diming you? Agoraphold. Number four, product direction. You are passionate about your social media features and functions, we're number one. And number five, campaign optimization. Are your campaigns working? Can you make them better? You tell me. G2 says, those five reasons are what make Agora Pulse the right choice over Hootsuite, over Sprout Social. Think of us as the Eiffel Tower of social media. My name is Daryl. I'm with Agora Pulse. <laughs> the Eiffel Tower of social media. For those who don't know, we're actually based in Paris. So there is that French connection to Agora Pulse. But Deidre, another concept that you talked about set around this idea of not just publishing show notes, but creating show notes funnels. Oh, explain that. Yes. Yes. When, oh gosh, how long ago was it now? Probably about 12 months ago. Um, I was speaking to one of our users, Capshovian, one of our Capshovians, Adam Lamb, and he was talking about how since he used um, Capshow's email and especially the subject lines, he was like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. You know, went from an average open rate of like 23% to something like 66% just from, you know, testing Capshow's um, subject lines. And, but then he was like, but what I'm finding is that I'm even though the email is all about getting people to listen to the podcast episode, I'm not really finding my listener numbers increasing. And I was like, oh, this that's interesting. Um, let's talk a little bit more about that. You know, how are we? How are you getting people onto your email list? And he was like, well, on my website, you know, I have a like a PDF checklist that people can opt into and and, and get. Um, and the more that I thought about the, that, the more that I was like, oh, I wonder. And I wanted to test this actually. I was like, "Your the lead magnet was for um, was for a very specific purpose, which it needs to be. But it it was it was delivered in a very specific way, i.e., it was written. And I my brain started thinking to be like, are they the same people who actually want to listen to a podcast? Right? Because not everyone is created equal. Just because we might love audio or video doesn't mean that all people do. And so I wanted to test this. So what I did was even I, I tested it with my, with my own podcast first, because that's generally what we do. We always test with ourselves first. Okay. I started, I was actually recording a, a guest interview with someone called Kevin Schmidlin, who's also a, like a podcast growth coach. And he, we were, we were, we were talking and he mentioned, it was just like, you know, how you said, uh, Mike, I was like, I just flew by this. He, he did the same thing. He just like flew by this one thought um, that he had and then just kept going. And then 
but towards the end, because it was on my mind and I was like, I need to ask him this. But what I did was I actually like ended the the podcast episode, but the recording was still on. And I was like, hey, you mentioned this one thing that has been on my mind. Can you go deeper into what that actually, like how, how you, how you do it. And so we recorded that and it was like an a extra three to five minutes. And what I decided to do was go in the podcast episode. I actually, as my call to action was like, and by the way, if you notice, Kevin mentioned this one thing that he didn't go into and it was on my mind. So I actually asked it, asked him the question later. And if you want that bonus episode, a bonus clip, I should say, go and get it in the show notes. Um, and so people would opt in for that. And what I found was that what, what we were creating here was like listeners opting in for something that they would listen to. And then when we actually emailed them then about a new podcast episode, it was for them to listen. So you can sort of see, you know, what we were trying to do, which was like, how do we get the, the right audience in the right, on, on my list, doing the thing that I want them to do in the right medium? But through the right medium. And so that became what we call the show notes funnel, which is how do you actually content honey trap someone into wanting to go to your show notes? And I have a whole system there and actually opting in for the thing that you want them to opt into so that you can build your list and ultimately get them taking action. So that's what the show notes funnel um, became. Um, and so what we started doing was it was like, because uh, you know, content honey trap really all that is, is creating curiosity. So throughout the episode, we would create curiosity about something. I would be like, hey, you can actually, you know, like assage that curiosity by going to the show, to the show notes and opting in for this thing. But even in the show notes, I was actually thinking about how do I create curiosity and have people wanting to come to the show notes. So I would actually embed rich media, things like photos and videos and pull out quotes. So that people actually wanted to stay on the show notes and actually lead, and it led, led them into that action as well. So that's what the show notes funnel became. Talked about honey trap. And I feel like we needed just a little bit more. You just like threw it out there. <laughs> she like Mike dropped honey trap. And I was like, Oh, we need more. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit more about honey trap? Yeah, for sure. Um, so that, uh, as I said, kind of, kind of hung up in short is really about how we create curiosity. And when I was, I, I, I tell you, I, we test everything on ourselves first, but it always comes from an ins a spark of inspiration from somewhere. And I remember I was at this event and it was one of those events that had like multiple stages. So you had to kind of look at the agenda and decide which one you wanted to go to. And there was a particular presentation that, that was on that was titled how I made a million dollars with a $19 product and a toilet seat. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like it was a packed room, by the way. So clearly it worked. And when I was, so when I was going through this whole thing of like trying to think about how, you know, because I knew uh, my, my mentor was like, you've got to, you know, we hear the, the word curiosity quite a lot. But I think where my brain always goes to is kind of like the, you know, be social on social media, but it's like, what does that mean? It's like create curiosity, but it's like, what does that mean? And how do I do it? And so I started like getting really, I started really nerding out on, you know, how we create this curiosity. And when that example, like when I saw that example, I was like, oh my gosh, okay, why did that make me so curious that I had to go to that presentation, right? And it was because there was this like almost like mind blowing juxtaposition or paradox, you know, you've got this like big result, million dollars that a lot of us are striving for. And then we have this like $19 product and toilet seat, which almost is like when you try to wrap your head around, you're like, I, I don't know how that's possible, right? This is like this big gap that is getting called out. And there's so much curiosity about, it. well, how do we close? How, how did this person close that gap? And so that became one of our mental models, one of our content honey trap mental models of how to create curiosity. You know, how do you juxtapose this big result with this like almost unbelievable <laughs> fact? Um, and so, and that, so that became one of our like story based content honey trap mental models. Um, and then, so the more that we really delved into, you know, and there, there are some really typical ones like the cliffhanger um, that, you know, that's the reason why soap operas have been going on for decades is because they have these cliffhangers that is based on the story it's like you need to know what happens next and so we actually essentially created eight mental models in total four that were based on stories and then four that were based on the tips 
that were being shared because a lot of us, when we're creating content, a lot of times we are sharing a lot of value. And so with, we start thinking about how it is that we actually create curiosity about the the tips that we're sharing as well. So anyway, fast forward, I was like, I looked at this, this title and I was like, I want to try it with one of our episodes. And I just recorded this podcast episode with this amazing woman, Angela Taylor, and she essentially had, she was operating a five-figure coaching business, working only 40 hours a month, like not a week, a month. And so that's what I decided to create my, you know, a paradox content honey trap around was like, that's how I promoted it. It's like how, um, how to, how this woman, um, this coach makes five figures working only 40 hours a month. And I literally, so I posted on social media and I literally, it was one of my highest engaging posts, A, but also also one of my highest engaged lists, like um, podcast episodes. I had people DMing me being like, I cannot wait to listen to this episode. Like it was crazy. And so that's when we were kind of, we knew that we were onto something around this, how to actually create curiosity via these eight mental models. Yeah, that's absolutely fascinating. Andrew Davis has an entire talk all about, basically what you're talking about, the curiosity gap. And he shared this great example where, uh, and some of you may have seen the rubber band around a watermelon experiment that that BuzzFeed did so many years ago, just wrapping one rubber band around a watermelon. And they spent, I mean, it went on for hours and hours and hours and the watermelon slowly compressed and people could Mm. not stop watching because they wanted to see when will the watermelon explode? And then of course, what that will look like. They wanted to sate that curiosity and it's a tremendous approach to content thank you for sharing that yeah no problem yeah robin do you have any other questions no i'm kind of like i've been taking notes the whole time like everyone keeps seeing my eyes down i'm like okay yeah i'll just take this that's great you're just like dropping amazing amazing content and truth for both me and mike and and especially nowadays we don't want to be a noise so yes like, you don't know, like the content vomiting, the, the honey traps, like that's, it's, it's so important. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah, of Absolutely. course. Yeah. I've been, I, I really seriously do have yeah, I'm like, all <laughs> kinds of notes. <laughs> I'm like, I'm okay, sure. Don't mind me. Um, keep, just keep talking. I think it's a yeah. bit amazing. Yeah. That's, that's when, you know, you've got a great guest, right? So I want to know more about cap show in the sense of what's coming next i mean you, you kind of teased a little bit mm. next gen so now we've got this curiosity gap there next yeah, gen. Yeah. wow what's <laughs> happening there and it's just you and us no one else yes. is listening so you don't have to worry about your product manager getting upset because you're you're sharing stuff that's not ready yet Go, just just tell us what, yeah mike that's great that's so great lead lead her to that <laughs> Yeah, so um, I think I mentioned that we're so close to actually launching Capture Next Gen. Um, and the way that we're launching it is rather than going, hey, we're going to, here's everything. Because again, this is, you know, we continue to learn from our mistakes. And what we found with the um, current version of Capture is that it, it can be overwhelming. Like we were like, we thought by giving people all of this content, you know, like people would just know what it is that they wanted to use and, and then just per- cherry pick, like, right? But what we actually found was that people would look at this and be like, oh my gosh, I can be everywhere all the time, all at once right now. And (laughs) which like sounds really exciting, but it's actually not, it's A, it's overwhelming, but it's also, that's actually what contributes to the content vomit. And so what we wanted to do was with Capture Next Gen was we wanted to be really intentional with how we actually phased in each of the features. So what we're going to be launching with first in about, three to four weeks time is going to be, it's going to be the title and description for anyone who has a podcast, but it's really going to be social media. And it's literally following the four post um, strategy that Katie, Brink- Katie Brinkley's four post social media strategy that I actually talked about, which is like your awareness post, your elaboration post, your community post, and your action post. That is actually what, so, you know, you do the same thing where you, in, where you put your audio or video into capture and given that content and the premise and the action that you want people to take, Capture will actually do the first draft of each of those four posts. Actually, I should say three and a half because the community post, we can't, we'll, we'll just prompt you through some things, but essentially the four posts for you so that you actually get, you actually start getting outcomes from your social media. 
but the great thing, the reason why we call it next gen is because what you won't, what you don't see is actually the intelligence that sits behind that. Like a, yes, the strategy, but also it's going to be self-learning. So the more that you use it and edit inside the platform, the more that we'll actually be able to learn, you know, your tone of voice, like how you like to structure your content, how you like to write the, the common words that you like to use. We'll actually be able to capture, we'll actually be able to learn that and apply that for content ongoing. And we're also, it also has this really cool editing feature that makes it really, really easy to leverage AI to help you edit as well for you. But that's what's coming like in the first release. And what we're doing is that because we know that a tool in and of itself, you know, can only get you so far. So we want to give you the, the, the training, the coaching, the community. So how people will actually access Capture Next Gen is through Capture Club, which is going to be at a ridiculous price, like founding member price. It's like literally 20% of what it's going to be. So you save 80% right now for being one of the first. It's insane. And that's so we're gonna that's that's how we're launching Capture Next Gen. And then what's coming is we're gonna have YouTube, YouTube description, like a thumbnail. We won't generate the image to begin with, but we'll definitely be recommending a really cool hook to put on your thumbnails, tags, things like that. And then we're gonna be going into the SEO space with blog posts and LinkedIn articles and, and everything. So yeah, we're we're gonna round out the content suite, but it's gonna be in a really intentional way so that our Capturians actually get results from their content. I love that you mentioned everywhere all at once because you've almost got this entire parallel going to Michelle Yeoh's film, right? Where you had, if you imagined all of a sudden having the ability to be in different universes and different times and do different things and bring in different skills, that might sound really cool until you're totally overwhelmed to the point where you yep. literally vomit. Exactly. <laughs> yes. And we've all done that. I did that too. And it's not pretty. <laughs> Just say no, no, it's not. So that sounds fascinating. Thank you so much for sharing that. And this has been such a fun interview, Deirdre. Thank you so much. Tell folks where they can go to learn more about you and learn more about Cap Show. Yes. So for me, I... I'm primarily on Facebook or LinkedIn. So just Deidre Shen, which I know is the easiest name to <laughs> remember and, <laughs> and spell and search for, but D-E-I-R-D-R-E-T-S-H-I-E-N. I'm sure that'll be in the show notes as well. And if you want to be a founding member of Capture Club, so if you're an entrepreneur and you're actually looking to get results from the content that you create, i.e. get more clients, then I want to invite you to be a founding member of Capture Club. Right now we have a wait list. So that's at capture.com slash club. And very, very soon we'll actually open that up for our founding members to, to actually get in and start doing some really cool things with our content. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. And that's all we've got for today, friends. Don't forget to continue to have that conversation in our Social Media Pulse community. And the podcast is going to be coming out very, very soon. So if you're listening to the podcast, please rate and leave us a review. Any final thoughts, Robin? No, I think if you haven't been paying attention, she said first release. So eyeballs went like this. There's way more to come. So thank you so much for coming on the show and telling us this. Yes, awesome. you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Thanks, on. everybody. Until next time. Thank you for listening to another episode of The MarTech Show, hosted by Robin Diamond and Mike Alton, powered by Agora Pulse, the number one rated social media management solution, which you can learn more about at agorapulse.com. If you want to make sure you're part of our audience during live weekly broadcasts, take a look at our calendar at agorapulse.com forward slash calendar, or click the subscribe button in your email once you register for any of these events. Is there a particular tool or topic you'd like to see us talk about, or perhaps you think your solution should be featured? Email me at mike at agorapulse.com. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Robbie Samuels hosts the On the Schmooze podcast. Robbie, tell listeners what to expect from the show. Since 2015, I've interviewed entrepreneurs who overcame challenges to achieve success in their field or industry. Tune in to On the Schmooze to listen as I ask deep questions to elicit untold stories about leadership and networking. And where can people subscribe? Find the show at ontheschmooze.com or on marketingpodcast.net or just search for it wherever you get your podcasts. You heard them. Go subscribe. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.